Did you know there are six types of sweaters? each with their own rules, ways to wear them, and the most common mistakes I see out there. Hey you, we're jumping into this. First, let's talk about fabrics. These days, sweaters are made from a number of different materials and you wanna choose one that best fits both your budget and your lifestyle. So cashmere is the most luxurious, softest, and expensive option, and honestly, rightly so. It looks expensive, but as it's quite delicate, you might wanna go for something else if your clothes tend to go through a lot of wear and tear. Now wool, it's one of my personal favorites as it's warm, it looks great, and it's a good choice if you consider the price to value ratio. Now merino wool is still on the delicate side while being more robust than cashmere, and regular wool is hardy enough to take a little more abuse. Cotton is probably the most widely available sweater fabric option, and it's not a bad one, as it usually looks pretty good, and it's warm and durable, but it won't break the bait. Also, if you run a little bit on the warmer side, then definitely go for a wool, silk, or cotton blended sweater. Now, this is usually gonna be a bit lighter in weight and definitely more breathable than regular wool. Sweatshirts are always made of cotton or a cotton blend, so I'd advise sticking with that. Now, it can be a blend with a little bit of stretch, but no more than a single digit percentage. Otherwise, it's gonna look overly shiny in person. Your hoodies, they can be any type of fabric you like. But if you're not wearing it while working out, then you should avoid any performance fabrics with stretch or lycra in them, as these will have a shine or sheen that looks off in your non-workout outfits. So that's all I gotta say about fabrics. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we discuss my favorite types of sweaters and how to wear them, I feel that I need to give my thoughts on a few of the more idiosyncratic options out there. That's right, it's time for the niche sweater rapid fire round. First up, the turtleneck. Okay, so this wouldn't make my all time sweater hall of fame as it doesn't really work year round, but I'll admit that it can add a touch of refinement to your casual and smart casual fits. There are two options to choose from. You got the regular roll over turtleneck, that's where you fold it over, and then the mock neck style, which is a little shorter. Personally, I prefer a roll over to a mock neck, but make sure that it only covers between half to three quarters of your neck and does not go all the way up to your chin. If that's the case, definitely go with a mock neck. Next, the quarter zip sweater. Now, I'm honestly surprised by how many of you guys ask about these in the YouTube comments and on my forum, and there's a reason I don't always recommend them. Basically, they only work on older guys, and I'm talking like mm, 40s and upwards. Any younger than that, and they just age you up and not in a good way. However, if you do fall into the older age bracket, then they can work wonders to make you look both smart and sophisticated. Just don't go for any anything higher than a quarter zip, like a half or full zip. This next one isn't necessarily a category of sweater, but is more so a variation on the classic crew neck, which we'll be discussing shortly. It's the cable knit sweater. So this guy really skyrocketed in popularity after Chris Evans wore one in Knives Out, and since then, they haven't really gone out of style. Now, personally, I think they're a great way of adding some texture into your outfits, but you want to be careful to keep the rest of your look streamlined and neutral to just allow the cable knit pattern to really pop. We have possibly the most controversial of the bunch now, the long sleeve polo. Now you may think this one doesn't qualify, but it's in fact, you know, not a long sleeve version of your standard short sleeve polo shirt. Long sleeve polos are actually crafted from a heavier knitted material, which basically makes them knitwear, aka sweaters. So there, I do think they work really well as a casual item, either with the sleeves, you know, down or pushed up. Just don't wear them with your smarter outfits as they can look really off in the wrong setting. It's also just not for everyone. Now, it's time to talk about the different types of sweaters, starting with the option that you're probably most familiar with and you probably have in your closet, the crew neck sweater. Crew neck sweaters belong in your closet because they look sexy and sleek. They keep you warm and they're extremely versatile. They're a great layering piece in your outfits and they can be easily thrown over your favorite crew neck t-shirt. Now, fit-wise, you wanna make sure that the shoulder seam of your sweater ends 
where the shoulder bone starts to slope down, so right here, and the sleeve should fit close to your bicep or tricep and end around the bend of your wrist without too much bunching. Now your sweater should also lightly hug your torso and shouldn't extend more than one to two inches past your belt buckle. Color-wise, my favorite shades have got to be black, navy, and charcoal in that order. So black crew necks are great because they'll go with practically everything in your wardrobe. Now, I personally love pairing them with dark wash jeans or chinos or with some black jeans for, you know, a cool and sexy monochromatic look. A navy sweater has an undeniably timeless feel and works great when layered over a white or gray t-shirt and with any of your pants. After black and navy, charcoal is the most versatile sweater shade and it goes great with blue, black, and even gray pants. Now, when it comes to layering, the biggest mistake I see guys making is wearing crew neck sweaters over collared shirts. This can work sometimes, but as a rule, I'd stick to crew neck t-shirts as these will layer easily underneath the crew neck sweater. Also, if you're a bigger or more muscular guy, then your crew neck sweater should never be worn as your outer layer, so on its own. This will just accentuate your size or any problem areas and make you look bigger than you are in a bad way. So instead, layer it under a jacket, coat, or blazer for a slimming effect. You can see an example of one of my favorite crew neck sweater outfits that couldn't be easier to throw together. But we're taking a classic charcoal sweater and layering it over a crisp white t-shirt with a pair of olive chinos and some low top sneakers worn down below. I love how the whiteness of the t-shirt pops out from under the hem of the sweatshirt and complements the shininess of those low tops. Dress this look up by switching up the low tops for some brown leather lace up boots and throw on a medium wash denim trucker jacket on top for some bonus style points. But what if a merino wool crew neck sweater is just a bit too dressy? So let's talk about the best friend of every work from home employee nationwide, the sweatshirt. Now I know what you're thinking. What's the difference between a sweater and a sweatshirt? So a sweater is typically thinner, more delicate knit, and looks a bit more formal in style. Now, a sweatshirt, however, is made of a more durable sweat wicking fabric like cotton or polyester, and it just looks more casual and sporty in style. It can have some exposed stitching on the chest area, but not every sweatshirt has this. And when it comes to colors, I mean, Heather Gray is probably my favorite. It's a classic. It's easy to pair, works with every skin tone, and has a casual vibe that looks great with everything from dark wash denim to joggers and a matching shade. That said, charcoal gray or black are also good options if you happen to wear black pants often. Contrary to popular belief, your sweatshirt should fit you like your sweater close to the body, although it can be a touch roomier if you prefer, but definitely no bunching around the sleeves. One of my favorite things about sweatshirts is that they are surprisingly versatile and they work great with everything from athleisure outfits to casual jeans and sneakers looks. However, you always want to avoid going for one with a big logo or graphic on it as this can ultimately look pretty distracting and childish. Here's an example of one of my favorite ways to style a sweatshirt. Honestly guys, a classic Heather Gray sweatshirt with some well-fitting chinos and a pair of white low tops, Mwah. This is a clean, comfortable, and casual outfit that keeps things both stylish and neutral. Now we have the dressier, older brother of the sweater family, the V-neck. So the V-neck sweater also has a notably dressier look than the crew neck sweater, meaning that it pairs really well with more formal items in your wardrobe like your blazers, suits, dress shirts, and more. The overall fit should be the same as your crew neck sweater. And I gotta say, stick with black, navy, and charcoal, especially if it's worn with a white or light blue collared shirt layered underneath. Speaking of layering, V-neck sweaters should only ever be worn with collared dress shirts like Oxfords or semi-spread collar dress shirts. Some men feel the urge to wear their V-necks over crew neck t-shirts, polo shirts, or nothing at all, which trust me, it's a huge no-no. And if you aren't wearing or don't wanna wear a collared shirt, then just stick with a crew neck sweater. If you're looking for some style inspiration, this is one of my favorite ways to rock a V-neck sweater. Here, we're layering a navy V-neck over a light blue collared shirt with some dark wash jeans and brown dress shoes on the bottom half. 
So we have the Oxford shirt untucked, but you can also tuck it into your pants so your sweater covers it completely. Now we have the most casual sweater option of the bunch, the hoodie. So this is basically a sweatshirt with an attached hood, but it also usually has a kangaroo pocket that extends across the stomach area. Now, like your sweatshirt, Heather Gray, charcoal and black, they have got to be my favorite colors as they pair so easily with so many different items. Now, one thing to note about a hoodie, and this is specifically for my bigger guys out there, is that it should not be worn to hide a belly. The reason why is that stomach pouch ultimately adds to the size of your midsection rather than breaking it up. So you have been warned. When it comes to styling a hoodie, it can be like a sweatshirt, surprisingly versatile. Here's an example of what I mean. This outfit combines a pair of low top sneakers, some wool trousers, and a bomber jacket with a heather gray hoodie worn underneath. This is a classic example of how you can use a hoodie to dress down a smarter item, in this case, a pair of navy wool trousers. Dark wash jeans or chinos would also work here, and feel free to swap out the brown bomber jacket for a black one if that's more your thing. All right, so let's talk about cardigans. Wait, don't click out, I promise. These bad boys are not just reserved for grandparents, skinny art school students, and unplugged era Nirvana members. If worn right, a cardigan can work as a cozy and stylish cold weather item, and there are actually two different types. So you've got a regular cardigan, and then you've got a shawl collar cardigan, which both look great on guys of all different body types. Regular cardigans can be worn under pretty much anything. And if you have a regular or slim body type, then you can wear them on their own, but preferably buttoned up with the bottom button undone to prevent bunching when you sit. And when I say on their own, I mean like you still have to wear a shirt underneath, but you can wear it as an outer layer piece. I personally think when they're worn unbuttoned, they lose their structure and they just get really floppy and messy looking. Now, if you're a larger guy, then they are to be worn buttoned up and only underneath another item as a layering piece, like your other sweaters. Shawl collar cardigans, since they're usually made of a thicker wool or cotton, are typically worn on their own, kind of like a knitted jacket. If you're a broader guy, then you should absolutely wear them as your outer layer, but never buttoned up. Leaving it unbuttoned breaks up the width of your torso and it looks great for hiding those problem areas around the midsection and upper body. If you have any other body type, then you can wear your shawl collar cardigan buttoned or unbuttoned, but once again, remember to leave the bottom button undone. Fit-wise, like your crew neck sweater, you want your cardigan to lightly hug your arms and body when it's buttoned up. And the length should be similar to that of a jacket. Basically, it should stop somewhere between just below your belt to your mid crotch area. When it comes to what you can layer under your regular and shawl cardigans, you can go for either a t-shirt or a collared shirt, but never a polo as the collar, it's just too floppy and it doesn't sit well. Now, if you wanna wear your cardigan under a jacket, then just make sure that the cardigan isn't longer than the jacket itself. Looking for ways to wear your stylish new cardigan? I got you covered. First up, we have an almost monochromatic outfit. So layering a navy regular cardigan over a navy t-shirt with some navy chinos. Now, as you can see here, navy is one of those colors that it's hard to get too much of. And I love the dark brown low top sneakers down below. So this is like the perfect look for those fall months when the weather gets a bit chilly. Next, we have a classic and cozy cold weather outfit with our shawl cardigan acting as our outer layer. So notice how we're keeping the top and bottom buttons unbuttoned, and I love the pop of white courtesy of the crew neck t-shirt layered underneath. Now, if you think this particular look is too navy heavy, then you can always go for a black or charcoal cardigan and it would look just as good. Just remember, if you're a bigger guy out there though, you wanna hide some weight up here, then leave the shawl collar cardigan unbuttoned. 